Back in 2008, Egyptian telecom giant Arascom and Canadian company Globalive hit their first big speed bump in the Canadian market. The CRTC ruled that Globalive wasn't Canadian enough because too much of its equity was owned by Arascom. Therefore, it wasn't allowed to operate a cell phone business here under Canada's stringent foreign ownership rules. The federal government and Tony Clement overturned that decision, but since then, Arascom and Globalive say they've been met by hurdle after hurdle that only favor the three incumbents, Rogers, Bell and Telus. I spoke with the founder of Arascom Tele Telecom, Naguib Sawiris, earlier today. Before we got to talking about his business interests in Canada, I asked him about his core business in Egypt and how his country is faring since the revolution that removed Hosni Mubarak from power. Now, many Canadians came to know of you uh, because of Wind Mobile, your investment in it. Uh, how, did that, uh, how did that come about? And I guess what I mean is, why would a company of your size uh, take an interest in such a small player in a market so far away? Well, uh, it was a bad idea, I must say. I mean, it was not a good idea, you know, because uh, we thought when we came in here, we, we, we work in very difficult uh, places like Pakistan, Bangladesh, Algeria, you know. So we are used to very rough markets. So we thought that when we come here, it's a very well-regulated market, you know, and everything would be, the laws are clear, it would be respected. And, uh, and we felt that uh, there is an opportunity here because the three incumbents, somehow have a easy life so if you there's no country in the world but canada that has these two symptoms one is that the arpo the average user per user is the same by the three companies it indicates just one thing is that they're having a honeymoon you know so that's one element the second it's the only country in the world besides china that has not opened up for foreign direct investment for foreign capital as a result of that, you've got your own incumbents who are inefficient with huge margins of profit. And when someone as crazy as we are decides to come in and challenge that based on promises made by the government that auctioned these frequencies, and then has to discover after two years or three years that none of the promises made are being respected. On the contrary, we had to barge on a lot of difficulties which were not anticipated, like the challenge of our license, the challenge of our it's two years a legal case of postponement, uh, the tower sharing, the roaming, all that was not respected. And we have no uh, way, uh, no one or no way to go and complain. And when we complain, nothing happens. You know, There is no real political will here to introduce competition into this closed market. You know. So do you regret the, the investment? Yes. You wouldn't, uh, because my next question was going to be, would you invest further in Canada? No, no. Even now when they're talking about the frequencies, the 700 frequencies, which we are badly in need, which we could actually, but they don't want to do a set-aside, which means that the incumbents will go in on this auction and outbid us because they want to prevent us from coming. Not because there's, there's a real value in the frequency they get, but they would put a premium to make it more difficult for us to get these frequencies. So without a set aside, without a clear position on the foreign direct investment, which has not been resolved till now, I don't know why Canada wants to be matched with the China. The only two countries, you know, uh, very ridiculous old laws and nothing is happening. So our position is clear. If they don't set aside the, these frequencies, we won't bid for it because why we would go, go in and just increase the price so the government makes more money and we get devastated. We're not going to do that. Someone else can do it, you know. Vimpelcom uh, in Russia is, is uh, buying some of your mobile assets, 50% stake in, uh, in some of those assets. What, does, what are the implications of that? Uh, There's no implications. I mean, I'm, I'm the largest, one of the largest three shareholders still, and I'm, uh, I'm in contact with the management and so on. I think uh, they, what I'm saying now reflects also their view. You know, it's just, uh, but the, why would you invest in a country that is really not acknowledging any foreign investment, doesn't say it doesn't want it, nothing, it's not clear about it, and when you do it based on promises, they are not being met, and now they want to make your life even more difficult by getting you to compete against guys with full pockets of money, or their only interest is to prevent you from competing. I mean, even with what we've done is we have helped the Canadian consumer get uh, offers which were 30 percent across the road cheaper. So, if we were given really the, the the necessary help and nothing special, just what has been promised to us, then the Canadian consumer would not be ripped off as he's being ripped off right now under the auspices of everybody. Do you do you take this strong message to to politicians here in Canada? I take it now through your program. I mean, I'm hoping they will be watching, you know, or 
You know, I mean, it's, look, when you protect your own industries like they're doing is, you need to ask yourself, why isn't a Rogers in the UK, why isn't a Rogers like Vodafone or France Telecom, Deutsche Telekom? why aren't they everywhere if they were so good? Why can't they just exist here? And the answer is very simple, because here they're protected, so they can be inefficient, their cost structure can be expensive, as long as the consumer is paying the bill, they're fine. If they were really real matches, why don't they go outside Canada and compete? You know, I'm a, well, why would an Egyptian like me be in 25 countries and a big company like that is just here? Because they're pampered, you see? So what we're saying is, and how can you create innovation? How can you interact with the other new applications, the new technologies if you close up yourself like that? And what's, what's the argument? I don't see it. I mean, the Ministry of Industry promised us more than one time that it's going to come, it's going to come, and nothing happens here. I mean, it's just like... These powers there are there trying to pressure the politicians against the consumers, you know, which we are trying to help, and not because we are good guys, because we want to make money. We want to come here and earn with hard work our, our but we are encountering nightmares, whether it's the tower sharing, whether it's the roaming, whether the frequencies we want, whether it's just respecting whatever has been promised to us. You know. We're out of time. We appreciate your time today. Thank you.